doing uh, on this tour is going around and asking um, audience uh, audience members to dedicate the film to somebody, um, someone you've lost, someone you thought of when you were watching the film. Uh, tonight, I will um, dedicate my screening of film to um, Edward, who lives in the Mississippi Delta, and I could tell you a lot about Edward, but one one thing I'll say is. Um, five-hour uh, five conversation over Chinese food. So that's, that's my Edward uh, memory. Um, so I, can I pass, can we pass these around? You don't have to, but if you want to, uh, to write something, you know, just put name, first name, and maybe a place, and then five words or a memory or, you know, a thing. Does anyone have any questions? Or I can just start. By the way, this was um, the most amazing audience experience that I've had. I don't know about you, Hannah, but we've been, you guys were awesome to watch the film with. So thank you. Um, any questions? Yes, yes. So you have your hand up right there? Yes. What made you, or what led you to focus on the South? What the led me to focus on the, why the South? Why did I do the story? Okay. Uh, I was doing uh, some stories for PBS on HIV and homophobia in Jamaica. And I came across some numbers in the American South that were really startling. AIDS being one of the leading causes of death among African American women, 50% um, higher rates of infection. And I just thought that that was a little strange. Not that I didn't think HIV and AIDS had still existed in this country, but that I thought it was really something that we had under control. So it set me off driving across the south. I've driven like 13,000 miles across the south. This has taken me about two and a half years to complete. Um, and the more I drove, the more I realized that this was not the HIV that I knew uh, kind of growing up. Um, and these weren't the same stories and the same messages that I had learned. So it's almost like the more I drove and the more I talked to people in the south, the more I had to unlearn all of these, um, everything I thought that I knew about HIV. Uh, so that's why the film is a little bit different. Um, it, people will say it's not like your typical HIV documentary because it, HIV is not like how we think of HIV um, in the cities among uh, white, gay men in the cities who, and that story is amazing, it's just not the only story that's out there. And this is not a new story, HIV in the South. It's just a quieter one. It's one that no one really talks about. Uh, but if you look at the stats and you look at the reports, then it's all there. I mean, the evidence is there, and yet it's still such a quiet topic. Thank you for your question. Uh, do you have, are you? We're handing mics up. Okay, you're handing mics up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes, I can, I get, I can get this one right here. <laughs> I know um, making the documentary must have been life-changing um, as an experience as a whole, but what was one of the most interesting things that you found out while you are doing this process? What was one of the most interesting things that I found out? Um, you know, a lot of times people will say, did you, why, why did you do it? What, what kind of struck you? Uh, and, you know, I relate to all of the subjects in the film. So when I talk, when I look at Josh, you know, and people are thinking, what do you have in common with someone who is, you know, a black, bisexual or gay guy in the Mississippi Delta, you know, living with HIV? And I say that I felt as isolated as Josh has felt. I felt um, alone at times, you know, and I, felt, I feel, um, with Kathy, I've certainly felt up against the system and, keep, you know, and had to keep going and going and going. And with Monica and Tammy, I mean, that to me is a great friendship, and they're doing everything themselves. And it's just this very do-it-yourself experience. So those are, I think, kind of universal uh, emotions and truths that, that I certainly felt. And I guess that's, um, yeah, I guess that kind of surprised me. Because, I mean, the more I hung out with them and the more I talked to people in the South, they're so different from, you know, from me and how I grew up, um, the more commonalities that I, I guess I found. Thank you. Yes. Do I get a film or a screen? To screen, like tonight? 
Do I get, you know, it's, I do. The question was, do I get a different feeling every time I go and screen it someplace? Uh, and I do because it's like the things that you pick up on or laugh about or like emote about. Um, like I, like it was, Vermel winked at somebody um, uh, and you guys laughed at that. I was like, oh, so it was the first time I actually saw that in a, in a long time. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's very different. Like, uh, in Shreveport a couple days ago, Josh's sister uh, came and she was in the audience and crying, bawling, you know, at some of the scenes, like when they're talking about, when Josh is talking about his mom being um, abused by his father. So that was really a different experience. Uh, so yeah, everywhere we go, young, I mean, so there are different kind of uh, things. Sometimes it's really fun and happy, and other times, like, um, in Shreveport, it was really kind of very much more emotional. Yes. Was it hard to find someone like Josh to follow around and let you kind of be part of his life? I mean, the other people, you can tell that they want to advocate for the cause, but, I mean, find someone that that's such a personal part of their life, you know, is that difficult? Um, that was very difficult, actually. And, and in fact, when I went across the South, um, no one wanted to talk to me. I actually uh, have about 20 notebooks filled with just notes, because most of the time, for about the first year that I was doing this, I just was talking to people. And I knew that I wanted to tell the story of you know, um, young, uh, gay, or bisexual uh, black man living with HIV because that's where that's where the highest rates of infection are at, at the moment. But I just didn't want to make that person a statistic, and I had to find the right person who was isolated in his hometown. And then I found out about these gay families, and so that's Josh's journey essentially. And it's I wish Josh were uncommon. You know, I wish I, I wish I personally hadn't found so many Joshes who would never have got, would never go in front of the camera. Um, but it's like this pattern, and it's all based on research as well. I mean, this is based on I think Kate Wetton's work at Duke University that looks at childhood trauma and um, health outcomes later on in life and HIV infection. So, like someone like Josh, like. Um, Men like him have, uh, follow this pattern in their lives, which is childhood trauma, um, this period of sexual ambiguity, uh, an HIV infection, an attempted suicide, and then a life of isolation. And the guy, Edward, that I um, mentioned earlier, he's just living in isolation all by himself. And the reason we had a five-hour conversation over Chinese food is because I was the first person that he told his entire story to. And to me, there's something wrong about that. I'm not a social worker. I don't... I shouldn't be hearing these things for the first time, and yet, and yet I was. Um, so yeah, it's Josh is very, very brave. Yes, thank you. Um, did you keep up with the contributors, Josh? Like, how are they doing? They're doing great. We're actually, I have, I just saw Josh in Shreveport. Josh and Monica, I saw in Shreveport, and Kathy, I saw on the road. If you go on our Facebook page, and I hope that you do, and I hope you say something about the film, let me just plug it for a second. And, um, and I hope you like it. Um, you'll see a lot of photos of us, and we've been uh, traveling around with the film. But um, they're doing great. Josh is in school. He's going to school for social work. Uh, and I think he's done next, next year. So he moved to Jackson. He's still very close to his family. I mean, his sister was there in Shreveport with us a couple of days ago. And, uh, but it's like a different kind. She was asked, she actually stood up in the audience and said, what can we do? Because we love Josh, and this is killing us, too, that we can't, you know, help him. You know, and he's just so quiet. Like, how, what can we do? I mean, these are answers that, that I don't have, but these issues kind of run really deep. Um, but they're all doing really well. Monica and Tammy, I mean, their agency still doesn't have any money, so they're trying to... Um, you know, make it work in, uh, in Columbia, Louisiana. And Kathy's still doing exactly that. I said I felt like Kathy this whole week. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions right here? What things I was noticing? Oh, one second. Here comes the link. Uh, one of the things I was noticing was she was uh, traveling a lot to try to get funding for what she was doing. How difficult is it to get funding for the travel necessities to try to get more funding? 
Um, I think I think when she goes to those conferences, they do pay for her way to come along. So that part, um, I have wondered about her. Yes. Yeah, no, <laughs> and that part she does. But you know, she's had to, like she says in the film, she's had to go outside of Birmingham. I mean, for someone who's the CEO of an organization in Birmingham, Alabama, to spend 120 days a year on the road doing other things, trying to get funds. I mean, to me, that's she has a great staff as well, but it's a lot. Like a lot of miles to travel. It's a lot of miles. I mean, I was just with her, and she was like zigzagging back and forth to places. <laughs> She's really passionate. Uh, over here, yes. Thank you. Okay, so you're saying that Kathy had funding from other people. What about that the Danny guy who said went to rural places to hand out yeah. pamphlets? Where does he get the funding to drive well, thousands of miles? He works for an organization in southern Alabama, and that's his job. He's a rural case <laughs> manager. So he goes out to those areas. He doesn't always just do that. It's just that the several times that I've actually ridden with him, he's been dropping off pamphlets, dropping off gift baskets, you know, really trying to make contact in these areas that are really cut off. And I think a lot of it is just that face-to-face -face, uh, interaction that, that's so necessary. Like he couldn't just email that, you know, kind of trailer of a, of a clinic right next to him. Right there. Um. So the film addresses a lot of uh, financial um, struggles that deal with uh, providing for people who are living with HIV. What are some of the biggest social um, issues and social controversy controversies that make it such a hard topic to deal with? I would say it's the fear and the stigma of uh, talking about HIV. Um, I think what I found was that HIV basically intersects all these very, um, all these other social ills. You know, I always say it's like my GPS into some of the more fragile parts of our country. So HIV, you know, intersects with poverty and incarceration and there is other STDs, teen pregnancy. I mean, it seems to, it doesn't travel in a vacuum. And I think all these other things, whether you're talking about the social um, issues like church and southern culture and conservatism, uh, those are things that I think all play into um, the, the spread, you know, at least it keeps it quiet because people don't want to talk about it. And I think stigma and, and fear is still a, re a very real issue. And, and to be honest, education too, so, many, so few people know exactly how it's tra I mean, transmitted. People are saying it's you know, still on toilet seats, I mean, that, you can get it by kissing someone, these are things that are just false. And they were 30 years into an epidemic, like how do we not know these things? Um, and I think the level of basic education is, is not there, and we aren't, can't talk about those things. So I think those are, are definitely issues. And, the, and that map, if you remember, that um, was done by a researcher, Bronwyn Lichtenstein, out of the University of Alabama, that, pair, that showed um, slavery and poverty and HIV. And there's something about this region and, you know, that their rates are higher. So, I mean, she correlated that and I didn't just do that up. Anyone else? Right. Well, thank you so much for coming out. It was really, really fun. If you have any dedications, if you want to just hand them down, that would be great. And I like it on Facebook.